Hi everybody, my name is Avril and I'm working at the Rediscovery Centre in Ballymun. Welcome to our workshop on biodiversity. So at the Rediscovery Centre, we are nuts about nature. We have an amazing little pond here and you can see snails and you can see little fish and pondweed and some flowers growing in the pond. We have a lots of willow growing in our garden. And that is the second best tree for biodiversity in Ireland. So the insects love the willow and it's really good for birds as well. Um, we also have vegetables growing in our vegetable garden and we use some of the vegetables in our cafe. So we really want to encourage nature and biodiversity in Dublin and around Ireland. So we, we want to show by example, what you can do in your garden or in your park or in your school or in your library to help nature. So first of all, I want to tell you a little bit more about the Rediscovery Centre. The Rediscovery Centre, we don't like um, the idea of resources being wasted. So we think it's really good for the environment to have a think about the waste that we make in Ireland and to think of ways to use that waste in a better way. So for instance, all of these things on the screen might have been thrown into landfill, but we have a big lorry, um, sorry, a big van actually, and it goes around to the recycling centers and it finds things that we could sell in our shop, brings things back to our center. And then we have lots of talented, creative people who work here. And they take the furniture that the recycling van, people in the recycling van might find, and they redo that furniture. So they might repaint it. They will upcycle it somehow. They might put new material on it. They'll maybe restuff the chairs or um, reupholster the armchairs that they get or repaint um, some of the tables that they find. They want to make the furniture look really attractive so it gets sold in our shop. We also get a lot of paint from the recycling centers and we bring them back to the bring the paint pots back to the center and we remix the paint and sell that paint in our shop. We also paint um, our own center with the paint that we get from recycling centers. We get a lot of bikes and we have a really fun job because we take all of the parts apart on the bike and then we remake the parts into new bikes, which is kind of like building with Lego, so it's really fun. Um, activity for us, fun job for us to do. We also, in our center, we get a lot of phone calls from businesses and they might have materials that they don't need or they can't use anymore. So they will contact us and we get to think of other things we can do with those materials. So can anyone guess what this rain jacket was made from. Yes, it was made from Ikea bags. So Ikea rang us and they had a lot of um, ripped bags. And we decided to make them into rain jackets. Can anyone guess what this lampshade is made out of? Yes, it's made out of 3D glasses. So we were contacted by a cinema who had a lot of spare 3D glasses. We also get to be really creative with the wood and the furniture that we um, get. And sometimes the furniture will not be suitable to make new furniture with, maybe it's too damaged, but we still get to create other things. Can anyone guess how we made these guitars? What furniture did it come from? Yes, we got some wardrobes delivered and we decided to make them into guitars. 
So we're so lucky in our job, we get to be really creative and we want to inspire other people to be creative with waste too. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about biodiversity. Um, biodiversity is, what is it? I want you all to get into your groups and have a chat and see what you think biodiversity is. So take a few minutes to do that. I hope you had a good discussion there. Um, so biodiversity refers to every living thing. So the biodiversity in Ireland refers to every living creature in Ireland, no matter how small, even if we can't see them with a the human eye, even if we need a microscope to see them, it refers to every single creature. So I would like you all to have a look at this picture and I want you to see if you can recognize the animals in this picture. See how many animals you can recognize. So every creature in an ecosystem or in a country has a role to play and has a job to do to make that ecosystem or that country healthier. So for example, we have a mushroom here and a mushroom is a part of the fungi plant family. And mushrooms are brilliant at decomposing dead plant and animal material. So if we didn't have mushrooms, we would have a lot of dead plant and animal material all over the place and the place would look a lot less tidy. And also our soil wouldn't be so fertile because when mushrooms decompose dead plant and animal matter, that all of those nutrients go back into the soil and make our soil way more fertile. So they're super important, even though they're pretty tiny and you could easily not see them. Um, also the likes of frogs. Frogs are a gardener's best friend. They eat a lot of slugs and a lot of flies that might eat your plants. So frogs are really helpful at keeping flies and slugs under control in the ecosystem so that the plants can grow and they can get healthier. So everything in an ecosystem, no matter how big or small, has a part to play. Now, sometimes when we think about biodiversity, we think of all of those animals we see in the zoo, the kind of big exotic animals. But in Ireland, we have some really cool animals too. And our animals sometimes can be, our wild animals can sometimes be a little bit shy and really hard to spot. But the more you try to, to see them, and um, the better you, get, you will get at spotting them. So here's an example of some of the biodiversity in Ireland. Have you spotted any of these animals? So here we have the red squirrel. And the red squirrel is the native Irish squirrel. So we also have a gray squirrel in Ireland but that was brought in um, to Ireland hundreds of years ago. Actually, the red squirrel is the, is the squirrel that is most used to Ireland. And it is really, really bright red. So you will definitely, if you see a red squirrel, you will definitely remember it. It's like a flash in front of your eyes because it goes, it also um, moves so quickly. We also are so lucky because we're at islands, so we get to see a lot of cool sea creatures like this blue whale. And I'd say a few of you have spotted this um, butterfly in your gardens. This is quite a common butterfly called the peacock butterfly. And what I love about this butterfly is that the little dots there look like eyes and it tricks its predators by pretending it's a bigger animal with big eyes 
And I think that's a really clever way to protect yourself. So why do you think biodiversity is important? I want you all to get into your groups again. And I want you to think about why would it be important to have lots of a variety of creatures in Ireland or in our ecosystems. So you can pause the video here and have a chat. So the reason it's important to have a big variety is because every living creature has a part to play. And in case one living creature dies out, maybe gets a disease, then at least there will be a lot of other living creatures to, to maybe do the job of that creature. So for instance, in terms of pollinators, we have a lot of insects that do that in Ireland. Wasps pollinate, butterflies, um, even some types of beetles will pollinate. Um, we also obviously have the bees and there's so many different types of bees and they all pollinate. But sometimes um, some flowers and some bees are very specific about what they will pollinate and some flowers are very specific about how they get pollinated and only a few types of bees can do it. So um, that's why some plants and animals are dying out around the world because they have really specific needs and they, they rely on really specific animals. And then if that animal dies out, that has an effect. And then the plants can no longer pollinate. So all of the creatures in an ecosystem rely on each other in some way to keep their numbers healthy. So one way we can really protect um, animals and biodiversity is to make sure they have the right habitat to live in. So for instance, an owl, a barn owl like this guy, will like to live in old trees and um, sometimes in dead trees where there's like um, little nooks and crannies for them to hide in. So sometimes human beings like to clean up all of the dead trunks of trees and to make a forest look nice and tidy but actually a lot of animals need live off those dead tree trunks um for example all, the, all of the decomposers they like to to live off the dead tree trunks and then a lot of birds eat the decomposers so if we, if we get too tidy and clean up anything that's lying around, that's not, um, that looks like it's decomposing, then we can have a negative effect on biodiversity and we can discourage animals. Um, so the more people who know about this, the better. The more we'll know how to protect our animals and how to make sure they have a nice place to live in. We also need to think about which animals we have in Ireland and what kind of places they like to live in and what kind of things they like to eat. So the red squirrel here loves to eat um, pine cones or pine seeds um, and it loves to live in the Scots pine tree in particular. So we need to think about that in Ireland and make sure we have the right trees for the right animals. And if you plant some nice flowers in your garden, for example, some buddleias or some um, cosmos, you will probably get to see some of the butterflies like this guy here. Um, and they love, they're really common in gardens once you have some flowers. Um, and here we have some bluebells and they're a common native Irish flower. And they're the, one of the first foods for bees when bees wake up after the winter, they can have some nectar or some pollen from the bluebells. Okay, so here we have an ecosystem. And I know I mentioned ecosystems a few times during this workshop. I just want to make sure that everybody knows what I'm talking about. So an ecosystem is everything in the environment. So it is the rocks, 
it is the soil, it is the weather, it's the type of trees, it's all of the different types of little and big animals. So it's the predators, and predators are animals that eat meat, so they eat other animals or insects. And it's also the plant matter. So plant matter will often get eaten by herbivores. Um, herbivores are like vegetarians, they only eat plants. And then often the herbivores will get eaten by the predators. So that's the way ecosystems often work. So I just want you to think about this guy here is a heron and he normally eats the fish. So if we got a rubber and we rubbed him out, what would happen to the ecosystem? Have a think about it and chat in your groups. You can pause the video here. Yeah, so if the heron disappeared here, then there would be way too many fish in the ecosystem. And that would probably make the water quite dirty. They would also probably eat too much of the plant matter. And then the water would get even dirtier because a lot of the plants will clean the water. And then soon, the other things that rely on plants, such as the duck, might will have to go and find somewhere else to live. So you can see how predators are really important to keep the ecosystem in balance. Now I want you guys to do a little bit of work. So a food chain is a diagram showing who eats who in an ecosystem. And the food chain always starts with the sun because plants make energy out of the sun. So through a process called photosynthesis, a plant will make lots of energy from the sun. And then a herbivore will eat that plant. And then often a predator will eat the herbivore. So this is an example of a food chain. So grass will make energy from the sun. Then rabbits like to eat the grass. And then foxes, if they're lucky, will catch a rabbit. And that's how foxes will get their energy. So now I want you guys to get some paper together. And I want you to think of some food chains from your local ecosystem. If you live beside a forest or a pond or a river or the sea, have a think about what animals you know and what they eat. You can pause the video here and take a few minutes to do this activity with your friends. Now, some of you might have got had really complicated food chains. And when you have a really complicated food chain with lots of arrows pointing in lots of different directions, that is actually called a food web. And it just shows how everything relies on something else in the ecosystem. So you can see the leaf fall just down here. And the leaf fall will be eaten by decomposers or fungi as well. And earthworms. And then the shrew will eat the earthworm. And then the owl will eat the shrew. So now we are going to play a really fun game that my kids love to play. But first, we're going to talk a little bit about animal adaptations. So I want you all to think about this. Think about what you see on the screen. Think about this squirrel, where his eyes are, where his or her ears are, and the tail, what the tail looks like. And think, why does this squirrel have its eyes there? What is it about this squirrel that, what is it about this squirrel's body that helps protect the squirrel and helps the squirrel find food? 
So I want you all to think about that for a minute. So the squirrel's eyes are at the side and that's really good so they can see any predators that are near. Because squirrels are quite small, even though they go quite fast, they do need to stop and eat and they can be in danger from predators. So they need to protect themselves. Also, the tail is quite helpful for balancing. Squirrels can climb super, super high and they really need help with the balance. The squirrels have quite sharp nails because they need to clutch onto the tree and they have really strong jaws to break open um, the nuts that they find. So how, does, how is this guy adapted to his environment or her environment? Yeah, so crabs are the same color as the sand often, which is a really good camouflage and that protects them from lots of birds that want to eat them. Also, they have nice strong pincers to protect themselves again. This heron here, how does how is he adapted um, to protect himself and to find food? Yeah, so the heron, as you can see, has a really long beak, which is really good for finding the eels um, in, the, in the soft mud, and also long legs to protect its, um, its feathers from getting too wet so that it can fly away if it needs to. So here is another example of some camouflage that some animals have. And sometimes when we think of camouflage, we think of animals hiding from other animals to protect themselves. But predators also have to hide because actually a predator has a quite a hard job and sometimes can be chasing other animals for a long time before it actually catches anything. So predators need all the tricks they can find to, um, to be able to sneak up and pounce on the other animals. So this predator here is hiding with its stripes in the long grass. And this predator here is hiding, because this is not a predator actually. This is hiding as a, pretending to be a stick because not a lot of animals like to eat sticks. And here, this crab here is hiding in amongst the seaweed and looks pretty well hidden there and camouflaged. So now we are going to play the camouflage game. So I want you all to have a look at this picture and see if you can spot the animal. Can you all spot? This is the leaf gecko. Well spotted. Can anyone spot this animal? So this one is called the willow ptarmigan. Can you see? See the two eyes over there? In the beak, in the wing. Who's hiding in this picture? So this is a chameleon. You see the little eye popping out there? Really well hidden in the leaves. He's hiding here. This is, this animal is called a decorator crab. And so clever that the decorator crab can get any materials from the environment and stick it on top of their shell so that they're completely camouflaged with whatever is around in their environment. I think that's so clever. Who can spot this creature? This is a flatfish, can you see? That's the fins over there, that's the tail.
So who's hiding here? Very good, it's an owl. Can you see the ears? I'm just gonna go back there. See the ears over here? And you can see one eye peeping through. What can you spot here? This is a spider. Can you see the legs? Just over here. And funnily enough, it has a little tiny smiley face. What's hiding here? Any guesses? So this is an Uroplatus gecko. You see the eye there? There's the other eye. And you can see the hands. Well spotted. He's hiding here. This is the common barren caterpillar. So clever, really camouflaged in the leaf there. Amazing. Who is hiding here? Yeah, this is a seahorse, really well hidden and camouflaged, exact same color as the coral. Unbelievable how clever that is, right? Now, this is one of the trickiest ones. Who can find the creature in here? It's just the toad here. Can you see the eyes? And the little knee here. Really super camouflaged in the bark, in looking really like the bark there. Okay, so well done. Now I want you to look at this picture and I want you to have a think. Is this a good place for biodiversity? Would animals like to live here? What about insects? What about plants? It really isn't a great place for biodiversity. And unfortunately, a lot of our towns and cities have places that look like this. So what can we do to help? What would you do if you were a city planner and you wanted to promote biodiversity and this was your town? What would you guys do? Have a think about it and pause the video here. So definitely we need more plants and we need more trees in cities. They help pollution, they help keep the water clean and they help pollinators. So if I was a city planner, I would definitely be putting a few planters here filled with nice flowers and plants. And I would definitely be planting a lot of trees over here because trees are so good for so many different animals, insects, birds, and they're really good for cleaning the air. And this city looks like it could do with some more fresh air. What can we do? It's good to talk about the problems, but it's even more important for everybody to think about what we can do to help our animals. So I'm sure you guys have a lot of ideas about this. We can't litter, no, but that's too dangerous for the animals. It doesn't look good. It doesn't smell good. It's not really good for anybody. So we need to promote litter picking and putting rubbish in our bins, in our cities and towns. When we go to nature, we shouldn't take things from nature because everything has a place in nature. So we need to leave the leaves and the stones and the pine cones. It's okay to take a few to show your teacher, but we need to leave most of the things in place 
um, in nature because everything has a part to play. We need to help all the bees and the insects and the birds and the hedgehogs by planting more trees and flowers in our gardens. And we can find lots of things online on how to help the different Irish animals. Um, lots of animals like piles of leaves and piles of sticks. So if we don't have a lot of time, even just leaving a pile of sticks and pine cones and leaves can really help because the insects love to have somewhere to hide from the birds. And when you have lots of insects in your garden, the birds will come as well. So bird feeders are really important in the winter months when birds just cannot find enough um, insects. A lot of the insects die in the winter. So bird feeders can really help the birds to survive and they need a lot of help. We can also let things just grow wild because when we let wild flowers um, grow and long grass grow, there's loads of places for the insects to hide. And lots of our wildlife is shy and they need places to hide. We can build bug hotels. We can find lots of cool ideas on, on the internet about making these. And we're gonna talk about them later as well. And bird box is really handy for birds. So they have somewhere to hide and to nest and to mate and to feed their babies. So bird boxes are really helpful for birds as well. So what can you guys do? Well, it would be really good for you to see how many bugs and beasts are in your local neighborhood. And then you can see if you make your own bug hotels or if you leave your own leaf piles and piles of sticks, see if there are more insects come and then you'll know that you're making a difference. So um, now we're going to have a little activity where you get to make your favorite animal. So we have a few examples here. Here is an example of um, a nice little owl that one of our staff made. So you can have a lot of fun with this. So what we do is we just use the toilet roll inserts and paint and your imagination. You can cut out little bits of the um, cardboard to make feet or a beak. You can get some stickers or you can just paint on the eyes. Here's a penguin that somebody made. Can you see that? feet and hands and everything. You can have a lot of fun with that. And here's a lion. So think of your favorite Irish animal or your favorite animal from the zoo. And think about what you'd like to make. And another thing you can make, I'll just click out of here. Another thing you can make to help animals is a bug hotel. So this we just made from an old milk carton. And milk cartons have um, mostly paper, but they also have some plastic. So they're quite good at, and um, they don't decompose very quickly. And they also have a little bit of aluminium in them. So if you want to, to fill them full of sticks, rolled up hard cardboard, pine cones, straw, and you can put that under a tree and that will be a really nice place for insects to nest and hide. Um, you can also make them out of shoe boxes or if you have any wooden boxes. So you can be really creative with the insect hotels. And that's a way to help nature in your garden, in your park, in your school. Um, so I just like to say thank you very much for listening. I hope you learned something and I hope one day we get to see you at the Rediscovery Centre. So bye everybody.